Hello. Welcome and thank you for purchasing this one-time use explosive compact cassette tape from Adam Co. I am your host, Adam Z, and today we will be repairing and talking about the Library of Congress cassette tape player, otherwise known as the C1. If you are here because of amulets and pain back, welcome. Click that like button and subscribe for future content. If you are here merely to repair your unit, then skip ahead for repair tips. But before we dive into that, let's learn a little about why it was invented, and what it was used for first. In 1928, a German man by the name of Ritz Lohmer invented magnetic tape for the purpose of recording audible sounds. His invention used a ferric oxide powder coating on a long thin strip of paper. First used to record computer data, magnetic tape was a surface that could be magnetically manipulated by a metal tape head. One side stores the information, and the opposite side is simply a substrate to give the tape flexibility and strength to last for decades. The practice of recording and editing audio using magnetic tape rapidly became an obvious improvement over previous inventions, and in 1963 the compact cassette became known as the future medium for audio storage. Until 1969, most Library of Congress talking books for the blind were issued on records either 3313 RPM, 1623 RPM, or 813 RPM. The records and machines were loaned to persons who were visually impaired or physically handicapped to the point of not being able to easily read standard size print. It was around this time period that the Library of Congress in the United States decided to build their own cassette tape machines. These old-fashioned rubber drive, play-only machines arrived with a four-track head in a reverse-track configuration. Designed and manufactured by Telex in the United States, the Library of Congress C1 cassette tape machine was invited for usage by the blind and handicapped members of our society. On the front of the machine, you will find an oscillator-controlled very speed motor, used to slow down or speed up the reading of the book. Pushing the slider to the left will set the speed to normal, whereas pushing the slider to the right gives you more flexibility and options to experiment with. Below that you will find a speed selector switch, the left for talking book speed, 1516, and right for commercial tape speeds, 178. This is the switch that is used to match the speed of the player with the recording speed on the cassette. Press, or rock it down, to the left, 1516, for talking books. Press, or rock it down, to the right for commercial cassettes. Libraries would distribute talking books on standard audio cassettes that were designed to be played at half the commercial speed using four tracks. Using that configuration, they were able to include up to six hours of reading material onto one cassette tape. Next is the side selector switch, which enables readers to play cassettes created with the standard commercial configuration as well as the NLS talking book configuration. Talking book cassettes will appear to be oddly numbered because of the four side or four track system. The first side of the first cassette will be 1, the first side of the next cassette will be 5, then 9 and so on. When starting with side 1, push the side selector switch down to the left, mark 1, 2. Do not change the switch to listen to side 2. Push the side selector switch down to the right for side 3 and 4. It is important to be methodical about the use of the side switch, or you may find yourself skipping whole segments of the book. As guidance, the narrator will provide instructions at the end of each side. Next are the sliders for the tone and volume controls, left for low, right for high. And as always you will find the usual buttons with stop, rewind, play, eject and fast forward options below but in a larger form factor with raised designs for each individual button. There are many generations of these machines both old and new but all operate with the same basic controls. To use the C1, open the tape compartment door by pressing the black eject key marked with a raised square. Insert the cassette tape, label side up, with the tape edge facing your chest. Seat the cassette by sliding it into the compartment door. Press the compartment door down until it clicks. Press and lock down the green play key with a raised circle to start the player. To stop the player at any point, simply press the red key with a raised X. To review the cassette soundtrack, press rewind. To advance the cassette soundtrack, press fast forward. To remove the cassette from the player, first make sure it is stopped. Second, press the eject key and the tape compartment door will snap up, and the tape will pop free of its seated position. To play the next side, turn the tape over label down, reinsert, seat in the door, and press the door shut. After reading sides 1 and 2, rock the side selector switch to the right to listen to sides 3 and 4. This tape was out this work to find.
you trail straight in the field. I'm teaching them how to keep all the programs straight, how to care for their business crops, and how to hopefully pass it on to their sons. My, wouldn't that be fun?